What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of PNTS Network and MM2K Gaming. Back again with another NRO Daily. We want to welcome gamers to our new video series presented by NRO Daily. It's called, Now We Could Be Wrong. <laughs> now, this is where we're going to use our investigative prowess to look at and possibly debunk some of the most commonly accepted theories in the gaming world. Did we hit the nail on the head? Afterwards, we'll let you decide. Now, in today's video titled CMA falsely accused of miscalculating Xbox market share numbers, we want to dive into a hot topic that has been causing quite a stir in the gaming community, and that is the proposed buyout of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft. Now, we believe it's essential to address this issue and shed light on why it's become a major distraction for gamers like us based upon possibly false pretenses, all right? But before we get into that, I want to get into part one that I think perfectly illustrates what's going on here and how we should frame this discussion versus everything else happening in the gaming world. Part one, the destruction, the, the distraction factor, excuse me, yeah, it is kind of destructive too, but let's start by discussing why this buyout has become such a significant distraction. Many gaming enthusiasts and paid spokespeople on behalf of Microsoft on social media have been vocal about their opinions and their potential outcomes. The truth is, the deal is currently blocked by the Competition and Markets Authority of UK. And the chances of the block getting reversed are very, very slim. And despite the rhetoric surrounding the deal, I know there's talks about closing without CMA approval or pulling um, specific business, if not all of Xbox out of UK, etc. However, until such very improbable events have been executed, they need not become daily distractions. And look, we get it. We understand the interest in the deal, but obsessing over each opinion piece and incremental steps towards a final resolution is counterproductive. Instead, we should be focusing on what really matters to us as gamers. The showcases from Xbox and PlayStation for 2023, expectations, and a deep dive into where they met or not. Let's not let this distraction overshadow our excitement for the games that we love. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, let's jump into part two. And that is the CMA's methodology. All right. So let's delve into the CMA's assessment of Xbox cloud streaming, also known as xCloud. And we're going to look at the monthly active users, which we're going to also refer to as MAUs. All right. There have been claims that CMA wrongly assessed Xbox market share by solely relying on Game Pass subscriptions. Right. And so, again, the theory is, is that for X cloud activity, instead of CMA getting specific X cloud um, instances and pings, they just went and counted numbers that were available for Game Pass. All right. That's the belief out there. And that's the belief that's being regurgitated uh, to the unsuspecting gamer, unfortunately. However, these claims we feel are false, as proven in the CMA's PDF document released to the public. What am I talking about? Well, you know how we do. Let me show you something. All right, shout out to Derek Strickland um, of uh, Tweaktown Publication. And Derek is somebody who uh, I don't really agree with a lot of the assessments that he comes with um, as, as far as the ABK deal is concerned, but that's okay. Derek is out there staunchly putting out the facts. Despite his assessment of, of the facts, he puts them out there so you can conclude and come up uh, with your own interpretation of them, right? So with that being said, Derek has done a fantastic job when a lot of people aren't doing this that are regurgitating what we feel is misleading information about CMA's methodology. He actually put the document out there so we can examine it and took out specific ex excerpts. So definitely follow Derek Strickland of Tweaktown on Twitter. We're also going to leave a link to this document um, in the comment section below so you can see it for yourself. And if you click on the link here, you can see this is the entirety of the CMA document that talks about their decision in blocking blocking the APK deal. So much information in here. We're going to uh, deep dive into um, important specifics here, but we definitely wanted to show you that the document is available for you to observe yourself instead of just listen, listening to rhetoric, self-fulfilling rhetoric from those with an agenda. All right. 
So with that said, the CMA use a variety of methods to determine xCloud's market share. They obtain cloud-specific data from companies, sought third-party data, and filter paid-for cloud service activity from non-paid activities. What am I talking about? Well, let's take a look at this tab specifically here. And this is coming from the same referred to document where they tell you to calculate the market share CMA says in tables 14, 15, 16, and 17. And we're going to be paying close attention specifically to table 15 to debunk this myth. We first requested data from Microsoft and its cloud gaming competitors on UK and worldwide and may use for their cloud gaming services for each month in 2021 and 2022. And then they also continue to say they split by users who access these services for free and users who pay to access these services. So this is this wasn't a roundabout just collection of Game Pass data. You, you want to know why? Because there's no such thing as free Game Pass access. There is free xCloud access through the xCloud beta process which Fortnite is on but this shows right here this is just one of the examples of many that we're going to show you that um cma got comprehensive data and they didn't they didn't just take it off the internet or twitter like a lot of you that are regurgitating that crazy stuff but they got it from the company themselves and they also backtracked it with third-party data all right so with that said this comprehensive approach demonstrates that the CMA's assessment went beyond simple associations with Game Pass subscriptions. All right, and to furthermore extenuate that, let me show you this. This is more from the same document that if you guys would just read it instead of just regurg listening to regurgitated stuff. I wouldn't even need to do this video, but hey, I'll take the views. Um, look at the uh, place where we have the point and finger says however by excluding free users from tables 15 and 17 they do not take into account the future ability of these services to convert to convert free users into paid users and therefore may underestimate these services strength in cloud gaming something that we've been saying here if they don't calculate uh the Fortnite activity because even though xbox free doesn't have a paywall xbox still gets paid for the dlc that people may get by playing on fortnite you know what i'm saying um via the uh x cloud free service so that still should be counted in the market and they do have tables that do that but again to extenuate the point that we are talking about here as far as this myth we're just going to focus on table 15 that doesn't include this data but i wanted to point that out to make people aware that if you include all of the money that xbox cloud gaming um could be making in the market right now it's actually worse <laughs> than what we're going to be showing you via table 15 as far as their market share is concerned all right i just want to put that out there so with that said additionally on page C7 of the CMA's final assessment PDF, they exclude, again, free users from their calculations, indicating the need for specific xCloud usage data. Not anything, not just lumping in Game Pass data, but specific paid for xCloud usage data. What am I talking about? Well, here goes the infamous table 15. And as you can see here, it has the CMA's calculation, uh, a breakdown of the market share or MAUs rather for the paid for activity for 2021 and 2022. Again, shares of cloud gaming services in terms of average MAUs 2021 through 2022 worldwide paid services only. All right. So now we see it that the CMA actually, you know, was able to filter out non-paid for activity because they got xCloud specific data. That's the only way they would be able to separate the two is if they were if they had xCloud specific data, okay? Furthermore, table 15 in CMA's assessment shows the calculated results of paid only MAUs omitting Google Stadia due to their inability to provide separate tiers of paid versus non-paid. Let's go back to the table. What am I talking about here? Look at this other finger pointing here, right? It says Google Stadia was unable to split its MAUs by tier. All right, showing you that again, in its calculations, CMA didn't just get this data off the internet or Twitter, or this data off the internet or Twitter, they comprehensively went through specific 
cloud activity. And where it couldn't be provided, they actually omitted the service. So if they weren't able to get the information that they needed that was cloud specific, paid for services only, then xCloud wouldn't have been here if they weren't able to splice it out, the cloud activity for one from Game Pass, and then from that splice out paid for activity. To believe otherwise, you're saying that CMA are, are, are liars, all right? And if you want to get into that type of zealotry, well, you just hold on. We got something for you. But that said, these details, again, reinforce the fact that CMA utilized cloud-specific data to make their assessment, all right? So with that said, we're not done yet. <laughs> it gets even worse for the zealots out there. Lastly, let's look at what appears to be a mathematical improbability that CMA's tables for xCloud represent Game Pass subs only. I know after I've shown you all that, there's still some of you coming up with nuances in the back of your mind to try to defend the foolishness that you were believing without vetting it, right? But we're going to go all the way to debunk it. Now, as publicly reported, Game Pass subs only increased 33% from 2021 to year 2022. What am I talking about? Take a look at this. It's common knowledge. This is reported by Statista, but this is not something that they've estimated. This is stuff that's coming directly from Xbox, all right? And 2021, Xbox had 18 million subscribers. However, a year later, they went up to 25 million. Again, an increase of 33%. All right? So, you probably are sitting there scratching your head like, well, what, what, what does that mean, MM2K? Well, consider this. CMA's table shows an increase of a hundred percent in market share huh what, what am i what, what are we talking about let's take a look let's go back to table 15. look at table 15 from 2021 to 2022 xbox's market share went up like 93 percent I'm, I'm estimating to almost a hundred percent depending upon which end of the scale that you're looking at how is that possible if game pass which is the thing that a lot of people are trying with a lot of the zealots are trying to say that they only count the game pass if game pass only went up 33 percent and this is what they're using how would their numbers go up a hundred percent in market share how is it possible if they're simply counting Game Pass numbers when, again, I got to say this again, Game Pass did not increase at the same rate as CMA's displayed market share data. It only went up again, 33%. Let's take a look at it. You do the math, that's a 33% increase. Right here, this is a, a, like a 90 to 100% increase. All right. So if A, if the market share data went up almost 100 up to 100 percent and b cloud competing competing platforms as well documented all over the web they were continuously growing at the same rates as their peers in the cloud meaning they didn't slow down in their in their rate of growth like you know there weren't less gfn users in 2022 than there would be 2021 that would explain xbox's uh, market share under that debunked theory all right they were steadily growing too theoretically impossible correct yes it is here's what's not x cloud usage itself did double within that time period providing what seems to be the final nail in the coffin to they only use game pass numbers <laughs> But again, we could be wrong. What am, what, what am I talking about? Here we go. Article from The Verge that just is is reiterating something that Sachi Nadella put out there earlier um, in, in that day, October 25th, 2022, that Microsoft says that more than 20 million people have used Xbox Cloud Gaming. Now, 
if you look here at the subtext, it says that's double the 10 million figure that they shared earlier this year. So Game Pass didn't double, but xCloud activity did. And that again goes to explain <laughs> the double in usage from the CMA charts. Uh, double in, in MAUs in the CMA chart. So you can sit there and argue, well, the methodology that they use within xCloud is wrong. You can do it all you want. All right. But that's not the point that you were arguing, arguing Zealot. You were, you were surmising that they were using Game Pass numbers. Mathematically impossible. Though we could be wrong. All right. <laughs> so with that said, uh, again, it's important, regardless of how you want this to go down, please kick the tires on the information that you're particularly getting on Twitter. There are too many people in high places when it comes to this deal that want a specific result and they will go through any means, regardless of how unethical as it relates to telling you the truth, no matter how non-transparent it is. Believe that. All right. With that said, let's go to part three. Something that isn't commonly discussed, but I think should be. And that's the EU Commission's peculiar decision. Now, moving on, we, we find it peculiar, all right, that the EU Commission, among the three major Western markets that have a deciding uh, piece um, as far as approving this deal, the EU out of those three is the only one suggesting that regulators are trying to protect Sony and denying that cloud gaming is even a market. What? What, what are we talking about? They're denying cloud gaming is a market, but nobody's saying that. Well, people from the EU are. This is an excerpt from VG Charts where they talk about comments that were made from one of the EU active members on the commission that decided in favor of the deal. And it reads, the official edit that the cloud gaming market isn't a separate market in the video game industry, but instead is a small segment segment of the overall gaming market. There's nobody else really saying that besides Microsoft. Okay. What's even more peculiar, though, is that the leaks from publications like Reuters indicating that the EU commission was siding with Microsoft well ahead of their final decision and revealing the exact date of their decision. Not once, but twice. Take a look at this. First article from Reuters. It says, exclusive. Microsoft sets to win EU nod on Activision with licensing offer, sources say. All right, so it was already decided a long time ago. Oh, the EU's decision is going to be this. Three months in advance, just about, from the decision being made. But they didn't do it just once. Not only did they decide it, which, you know, is a nothing burger by itself. But then they were, they were able to tell you the day <laughs> that, that they were going to make the decision. EU decision clearing 69 billion Microsoft Activision deal expected May 15th, sources say. Wow. So understandably, question that questions the level of coordination here. That raises even more questions about, we'll say at best the competency, quote unquote, of an impartial regulatory body like the EU Commission to this specific matter. I mean, again, let's look at everything in totality. Out of the three major Western markets affected most by the fastly rising compound annual growth of cloud gaming, as well as those that would impact this deal, you, EU, are the only one whose messaging is lockstep with Microsoft about their proposed remedies being sufficient. Not only that, you are also the only one out of the three major Western markets not to even consider cloud gaming a market. Again, just like Microsoft. This is in spite 
of analysts who may query CMA's decision on a nascent market, but they at least consider cloud gaming a market. Look, at the end of the day, say what you want about the CMA, as I alluded earlier, and say whatever you want about them colluding with Sony on their decision. Let's look at the facts, though. They took all of Sony's attempts towards blocking the deal under consideration and equivocally denied <laughs> that it was of any importance. EU, again, is the only one of this pertinent three making decisions regarding this deal in lockstep with a sole benefactor, even in rhetoric. But you know what? Let's drop that. We'll leave that one alone for now. <laughs> we'll just we'll just tag it to, you know, likely incompetence. And that takes us to part four. The conclusion, focusing on what matters. In conclusion, we believe the CMA has made the right assessment in blocking the Activision Blizzard buyout. Their concerns seem valid to us and they have utilized comprehensive methods, more importantly, to calculate xCloud MAUs. On the other hand, the EU Commission's decision seems per peculiar and raises doubts. You know what I'm saying? Eh. Some may argue about impartiality. We'll just, we're just going to say um, uh, raises issues about competency. As gamers, though, we must remember that constant coverage and obsession over this deal can distract us from what truly matters. Demanding the best games and experiences from our favorite platforms. And that is our staunchest statement here on this platform. That's where we got to maintain our focus. So let's shift our focus back to the upcoming game releases. Um, you know, like Starfield, like Spider-Man, the showcases, are they meeting expectations? And, and ensure that we as consumers receive the quality that we deserve. That's all for today's video. We hope we provided you with a thought-provoking perspective on the Activision Blizzard buyout. And remember, the record needs to be as accurate as possible for the unsuspecting gamer. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do us a huge favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, all right? And rock those bells so you get notified on the next one. And let us know what you think. Cause like I always say, who cares what I think? I mean, we could be wrong, right? <laughs> Thank you for watching. And we'll see you next video. And until next time, have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.